This is chapter 1-2 from Geometry, Points, Lines, and Planes. And there you go. Space is what surrounds us. And a point is a location in space. And we designate a point by using a capital letter, a, a unique letter for each and every point. So in this case, point B is shown. Two points are needed to define a line. So there's A and B. And if you extend the line infinitely through it, that's a line. And when you refer to that line, you call it, with the capital letters A and B, with a line with two arrowheads over top, indicating that the line is extending infinitely through B, that's the arrowhead, and from B through A infinitely, there's, there's the arrowhead over the A. So this is the correct notation, capital letters, only two letters. You can switch the order, make it BA, that works. If you put a script lowercase letter alongside the line, that lowercase letter will not indicate any specific point on that line, but we can refer to that as line L. And when we, when we talk about lines like line L or line AB, we're talking about infinitely many points that extend between A and B and beyond. Okay. Those points A, B, and C that are shown there are collinear. But A, B, C, and D are not collinear, and I misspelled that right there. There's supposed to be double L there. Let's see. Points A and D are collinear. Even though initially you look at that picture and there's this nice bold line extending through A and B, you know, and extending infinitely, so you have that line shown there. But since a and D are two unique points that, you know, that they're collinear because two points define a line. All right. A, um, a plane. A plane is a flat surface that extends infinitely. And you need three non-collinear points to designate a plane. So X, Y, and Z shown here are clearly non-collinear. They don't lie on the same line. And so you draw a little parallelogram symbol following capital letters X, Y, and Z. That's how we designate that plane. Now, if you choose to, you can get rid of this symbol and just write the word plane, X, Y, Z, means the same thing. And if you place a lowercase letter on the plane, but yet that lowercase letter T in this picture does not represent any specific point on the plane, we can now refer to that plane as plane T, lowercase script letter. Okay, how many ways are there there to name the plane using three letters? Well, there's a whole list of them. There you go. And if you look any of those three letters up, those are three non-collinear points, and with the plane symbol in front of it, that designates that plane that's shown. Now, name another plane. Well, I named every way we could name what's shown, but we can draw a completely different plane and place it into here. And if I say that points J, H, and O are on that plane, they're three non-collinear points, that's a plane. So there's look, plane uh, J H O. Okay. So points on this picture J H M and I are those are all collinear, and then O is not collinear. So J excuse me I don't know if I said J G H M I and O those are all coplanar points. They all lie on the same plane. All right, a line segment. Similar rules in notation compared to a line. You're going to use two capital letters to designate the endpoints. A line segment represents infinitely many points between those two endpoints. And so the notation is going to be put a solid line segment here above it, the two letters, and put the endpoints, MA or AM. Done. Um, 
okay, I threw a point T in between M and A. So M, T, and A are collinear. And it's still acceptable to say MA or, or AM as to designate that line segment, but only two letters to define a line segment, not three. So ATM, not acceptable. That T shouldn't be there. Array. Array is is same designation rules as what we were just talking about before, except we have to pay attention to where it begins and where it extends infinitely. Rays are always designated first with the letter where it starts, the endpoint. M is the endpoint, and then it extends infinitely through T and A. So it's perfectly acceptable to say M, A, where here's, look, a fixed ending, and there's the arrowhead. So it starts at M, and it extends infinitely through A. And this is the same ray, M extending through T and infinitely beyond T. They mean the same thing. Okay. Uh, in this ray, the ray itself is pointing from right to left, but our notation, the way that we write, is always left to right. So you always begin in your notation with the, with the end point going through where, and then going to where it extends infinitely. So it's NU or NF. And UN is not acceptable, and you could argue with me, hey, look, I got the end point. There's no arrowhead by the end. That's, you know, that's the starting point. But we always have the notation from left to right. So it should be NU would be the correct notation, left to right. And then this is clearly unacceptable because there's three letters, two letters to define array. Um, okay, opposite rays share a common endpoint. So H is the common endpoint. So H, N extending infinitely, and H, S. Those are opposite rays. And you'll notice that all three points that we're talking about here are all collinear. All right? Then, let's see. Postulates. Postulates are a rule that are so basic that we just accept it. We can't prove it. So our first postulate is going to be postulate 1-1. Through any two points, there's exactly one line. Yeah, through any two points, there's exactly one line. Um, we need this definition before we go to the next postulate. An intersection is where objects or shapes or figures meet, what they have in common. So. Here's a picture. Line JN intersects plane GMO at point H. Okay. So postulate 1, 2 is talking about intersections. Two lines intersect at one point. So FG and AB have a common point where they meet is point E. And if we're going to use set notation, look, I got FG with the arrow, you know, showing a line segment, AB showing a line segment. And this here, this upside down U in set notation means intersection. So this literally means line FG intersects line AB, and I should say at point E. And I'm using capital letters for the point. Okay. Postulate 1, 3. Two points, excuse me, two planes intersect at a line. And I'm manipulating this image where we've got two planes, and notice that no matter what I do, they intersect at a line. Okay. And then postulate 1, 4, three non-collinear points define a plane. We've already heard that before in this lesson. Now it's a postulate. Three non-collinear points define a plane. So plane GMO, those are three non-collinear points. That's a plane. But GMI is not a plane because GMI, they lie on the plane, but those are all collinear points, so you can't. That, that's not acceptable to, to use to designate the plane. They've got to be three non-collinear points that lie on the plane. Now, those, I think I said before, yes I did, that those points G, M, and O are coplanar points. They're on the same plane. And then here is a video to illustrate this, that you need three points to define a plane. So. I'm taking my fingers here, I labeled them, which you probably can't see, as points, and
stretching a rubber band between the two ends of my fingers there, that's a line segment. And when I go to balance a card on there, well, you can't balance a card on a line or a line segment. It's not possible. So, but if you add a third non-collinear point, see, it forms a flat surface. There you go. It, that's a plane. Now, you can add a fourth coplanar point, just like a chair in a classroom has four legs and it sits on a flat floor, you know, which is a plane. But you could also sit on a stool with three legs and that would work. Three are the minimum that's needed to define a plane. We're done. So, thank you for watching this lesson. And there we go.